chances are you've actually been doing expeditions wrong. If you've noticed that you haven't been getting that many logbook drops, even after the buffs that have happened recently, most likely you're focusing on the wrong things. Now, I'm not going to say this is necessarily your fault because GGG didn't make it obvious exactly what is what in this. If you do a little bit of deeper digging, you can figure it out. However, it isn't obvious at a first glance. I'm going to give you the basics of what you should be doing anytime that you enter an expedition in any map, but you can look forward to more specific information coming later. Things like how to do logbook, if you should sell them or just run them, and whether or not you should spend all of your hard-earned currency gambling with Gwynnon or trying to buy currency from Tujin, that will all come in a later video. But for now, let's talk about the very, very basic level of how you should be doing expeditions. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and remember to like the video if you're enjoying the content, and also if you're part of the large percentage of people who are still not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure that you do that so that these videos are sure right up in your feed. You can always change your mind later, and I greatly appreciate all of your support. Let's get back into the video. All right, boys, so we're a little bit into Expedition League now. If you've been wondering what's been going on with me, I've been taking the League a little bit slower just because I don't fully enjoy all of the changes that GGG has done. I'll make a video about that later on once I have a little bit more of a well-formed opinion of this. I want to let the League marinate a little bit more and I want to think about these changes more before I give my actual opinion on them. Now, I've been running a decent amount of Expeditions. I've been doing a couple logbooks. Uh, logbooks tend to be pretty fun and they are something that is quite enjoyable, but I know a lot of people have been saying, I can't find logbooks. They're not dropping. I don't know where to find them. I have no idea what's going on. And while before they did the buff earlier, I I would say that yeah they weren't dropping too much they are actually dropping a decent amount now the big thing to think about with this is that most of the stuff that you're actually gunning for may not be obvious at first glance now this is a forbidden rights totem build that pretty much everybody has been playing it's a very just standard totem build there's nothing like crazy going on here. You're using Soul Mantle, you're using uh, Kikizaros and Essence Worms. One of the major things that did change is that you only have to use one Kikizaro now with the self curse stuff, simply because of the change to the God Power. I'll make a video about this build uh, sometime in the near future. I just want to finish it out and actually test everything on it. It's going pretty well, but yeah. In the meantime, if you're looking for something, I have a very basic POB that's linked on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash bigducks, which you should go follow, by the way. However, there's plenty of people out there with build guides right now. Um, I know a bunch of people that have made build guides for this, but if you're waiting for a big ducks build guide, it'll come soon. Now, something that I do want to talk about here is that the major thing that you're most likely doing it's wrong is that you see these giant remnants, right? Like you see these remnants here and you see these chests and everything. Now, at first glance, it would seem like when you put down your little circles, you'd probably want to be going for as many of these remnants and such that you can, right? You'd probably want to be getting chests because that's obviously where all the loot is. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The thing that is actually what you're looking for and the main source of logbook drops, which is the thing that you're actively going for, is going to be from these skulls. Now you see this large skull here, right? This is what you're actually trying to get to. However, it's not that simple. There's a bunch of these little skulls around here, which are also good. However, the way that this works is that when you place down one of these charges and say that you hit one of these unearthed remnants, right? So say we go from here and we hit both of these remnants, yeah? So from the point where we're at right now where this charge is down, all of the enemies that we hit afterwards are going to have these buffs. They're gonna have 40% increased quantity of items as well as 300% increased rarity. And then every single one after that, say if we moved over to this unearthed remnant here, everything that we did after exploding this one would then gain also 50% increased quantity of expedition logbooks dropped by runic monsters. Now keep in mind, you notice how it says logbooks dropped by runic monsters. That is important. The runic monsters come from these totem poles with the skulls on them. That's what runic monsters are. Contrary to what it might seem, normally you'd like work your way through and try to get up to all the good stuff. You want to go for these remnants that have the good modifiers on them as soon as possible. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either min-max it in the sense that you would try your best not to hit any of these little totem poles like this and you would just hit all the best little remnants here. You'd make sure that you get all the ones that you want. And then after you get the remnants that you want, you could go for the totem poles. I don't necessarily feel like that's the easiest way to go about it because typically in Path of Exile, it does matter how efficient you are and running more maps and getting through maps faster tends to be better than getting the most out of each individual map. So what I do most of the time is I look for ones that I can't do. Like I am a chaos damage build at the moment, so I can't do monsters or immune to chaos damage. However, I can do most everything else. So what I would personally do is I would just try to get the most bang for my buck going through all of this, right? So in this one, I would say I probably start here, pop some of these chests there, 
I'm going to hit these just because I do want these chests as well. A red chest and a yellow chest is pretty good. It's going to get us a bunch of fragments for Gwynnon, which we don't know if she's good or not yet. You'll notice that there are three big skulls right here as well. I would probably spend one to open those three big skulls. However, now I know that there's a bunch of skulls over there, right? So I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I should go down and get these first, right? So I'm going to go here first, and that's going to give me more logbooks. And then I can come over here and be, oh, wait, I can't actually go that way because chaos immune monsters are there. So then I'm going to have to go this way. Now you can kind of see how this might take a little bit more time than just spamming through it, right? So ultimately what I'd probably end up doing is I'd go over here, grab this one there, grab this one up here. I can't get all the way up there to that runic one, so I'd probably move this one a little bit more forward if I can. So we can probably move this to like here, grab all of these, and we'll grab all of these circles if we can get them. Now we do have a choice here. We can choose between that one down there or this one up here. I'm gonna go with this one here because we can get this there and then we can get all of these skulls down here. Now, that is what I would say would be min-maxing this as much as you can. However, I don't necessarily think that that is 100% necessary. Rarity is okay, but rarity, keep in mind in this game, is just going to increase the chance for it to be blue or yellow, an item like that. Typically, as most things are in this game, quantity is king, pack size is king. So you're going to want to go for things that say, like increased quantity of items found, increased quantity of logbooks is very, very good. Rarity is not that important, and then you're going to have these extra ones that say things like excavated chests have a chance to contain an additional unique item. That's cool and all, but not too important. Pack size is very big. And then these chests are mainly just going to give you the little shards that you can get for the different, uh, I don't even know what to call them at this point, traders that you can work with, like Gwynn and Tujin. Now, when you detonate these explosives, it is just going to spawn all of the monsters in order. There's nothing real special about how you do this. I've been playing this totem build and it's been working rather well. I haven't been having too many issues with it, but I know a lot of people do have some issues with these monsters. Unfortunately, with the changes that they did make to damage, the game has gotten a decent amount more difficult, especially for lower tier power builds. Like I said, it's something that I'll talk about more in a later video, but any builds that were doing not as much damage maybe as some other ones, and then you get monsters like that, right? Are kinda, are kinda suffering right now. I'll make a video talking about that, but I want to play a little bit more in this league and I want to test it out a little bit more so I can get my opinion to be a little bit better formed than maybe what it would have been. We didn't really drop very many items still, and that's not uncommon. So the thing about logbooks is that you're not going to get them constantly. They are worth a decent amount of money, and these chests will drop you a decent amount of these artifacts. So if you are looking for specifically artifacts, I would say to focus on getting those chests. However, in the long run, I do think that logbooks are going to be what's no best for just getting that. raw currency. Now, logbooks are currently going from anywhere from like 5C for a very low tier one to up to like 25, 30C for a higher tier one. However, I do feel that you can get significantly more money out of the logbooks than that if you are doing everything correctly in them. Now, I'll make a video later talking about logbooks once I've got a little bit more experience in them. I've only ran a few at this point, but they have been pretty good returns so far. But I would say that if you're looking for more logbooks, make sure that you do focus on getting these totem poles killed, because these totem poles with the skulls on it are where the actual runic monsters are going to spawn. It's very obvious that these big things, these these big chests you should be focusing on, right? And the ones that have the chest icon on them, those are the ones you should be going for, right? Well, not necessarily. You still want to get those, but the big totem poles of the skulls on it are actually the thing that you're wanting to go for. And that is going to be it for the video. Now, if you have any further questions about any of that or you want to come hang out with the boys, make sure that you join my Discord. It is linked down in the description. Also, remember, I am live on Twitch Monday through Friday, 11 to 4 Eastern at twitch.tv slash bigducks, which you should go follow, by the way. If you just want to come hang out and talk with me or maybe you got a question or something like that, feel free to come over and chill with your boy. Now, Expedition League has been okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the patch, but I am a pretty big fan of Expedition in general. Logbooks are pretty fun. It's an interesting new kind of thing that PeeWee really hasn't had something like. They kind of feel like blighted maps, but not as annoying as blighted maps can be to play sometimes. We'll see when we get a little bit more into the logbooks and seeing some of the bosses and such, but for now, the league seems pretty decent. So remember guys, if you're enjoying the content, make sure to like the video so that other people can enjoy it as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content similar to this and stay safe out there in Ray class. And I'll see you guys in the next video.